Tibeti Baba also known as Mahasadik Tibeti Baba or Paramhamsa Tibeti Baba, alternative spellings Tibeti Baba, Tibati Baba, Tibeti Baba, Tibeti Baba or Tibeti Baba, Tibetan Baba or the monk from Tibet, when translated into English, born Nabhan Chattopadhyaya Bengali, Nabina Chattopadhyaya Mahasamadhi or death 19 November 1930 was a famous Bengali philosopher, saint and yogi. He was one of the few saints in India whose life was an amalgamation of the Advaita Vedanta doctrine of Hinduism and Mahayana Buddhist doctrine. Tibeti Baba was a master of all the eight siddhas and supposedly had remarkable healing powers. Even though he was master of all the siddhas, he was not personally interested in using them. Biography <inaudible> 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 There were many incidents and events that had taken place in the life of Tibeti Baba died the 19th of November 1930. Many events have been recorded in writing by his devotees and disciples and some have not been recorded. Broadly speaking, there are two views regarding events and incidents that had taken place in Tibeti Baba's life. The first view is propounded in books like, Bharata Sadik O Sadaka, and Bharata Sadik, Sadaka. The second view is propounded in biographical books Tibeti Baba Pariche and Paramhamsa Tibati Baba Smiti Katha, written by Tibeti Baba's disciples like Kunjishwa Misra and Akhandananda Brahmachari. Since the books written by Kunjishwa Misra and Akhandananda Brahmachari have been published by Tibati Baba Vedanta Ashram, address 76 thirds, Tantapara Lane, P.O. Santragachi, Howrah 711104, West Bengal, India. Therefore, the view of the second school seems more authentic. However, the events connected with the life of Tibeti Baba at Palatpur Ashram at Palatpur village at Burdwan, India, events in other parts of undivided India and Afghanistan, his philosophy, spiritual powers and his teachings seem completely authentic. So views of the former school are given together with the latter school. <laughs> First view This view regarding the events and incidents that had taken place in Tibeti Baba's life is propounded in Bharata Sadik O Sadaka and Bharata Sadik – Sadaka. Early life Nabhan Chandra was born to a Bengali Rari Brahmin family. His father was a Tantra yogi who had settled in Assam. While his mother was a Shaivite a devotee of Shiva. It is said that he did not remember the year, date and month of his birth. His father had died when he was very young. So his mother had to bear great hardships to bring him up. From his childhood Nabhan Chandra had keen interest in nature and used to think about the maker of this world. But his ideas about the maker did not tally with his late father's or mother's concept of God. His idea was that God must be very different from what common men and women think him or her to be. Sanyasa <laughs> <laughs> As years passed by, Nabhan Chandra entered into the world of teenage. His ideas about God became even more profound. One night, on the occasion of Shivratri festival, he had a brief quarrel regarding God. Consequently, he left his home in search of the person who had created this world. Ayodhya <inaudible> <inaudible> After leaving his home, Nabhan Chandra met a group of pilgrims in an inn. The destination of the group was Ayodhya, the birthplace of Lord Rama. Nabhan Chandra had made up his mind to become sannyasi a wandering monk in search of God. He requested the pilgrims to take him with them. The group members agreed and soon began Nabhan Chandra's long journey from Assam to Ayodhya. When the group reached Ayodhya, the members except Nabhan Chandra began to pay reverence to Lord Rama. Nabhan Chandra's mind was engrossed somewhere else. 
His concept of God was of indeterminate type, unlike deities like Rama, Shiva and others. So one day he quietly left the group. After crossing the Saryu River, he headed towards the north. He finally reached Nepal. <laughs> Nepal in Nepal, Nabhan Chandra met an unknown Hindu monk who was living in a hut near a river. He began living with the monk. One winter night he expressed to him his desire of acquiring the knowledge of God. The monk asked him to immediately take a dip in the river. After taking a dip in the river he approached the monk and was made a disciple. The monk explained that Nabhan had to make an all-out effort to acquire the knowledge of God. He asked Nabhan Chandra about his favorite object of love at his home. Nabhan Chandra replied that he loved his lamb very dearly. As he was just a teenager, so his guru asked him to meditate on the favorite object of his love i.e. the lamb. After some years of rigorous meditation Nabhan Chandra, finally attained samadhi super -concentration. Thus he acquired the knowledge of Brahman in animals which according to Advaita Vedanta Brahman is present even in animals. This type of knowledge corresponded to knowledge of Saguna Brahman. <laughs> Manasarova, Tibet After attaining knowledge of Brahman in animals, Nabhan Chandra headed for Manasarova Lake in Tibet. He finally managed to reach there, unmindful of the obstacles that he had encountered during his journey from Nepal to Lake Manasarovar in Tibet. Having reached the lake, he chose a cave near the lake and began meditating on God. He desired to have vision of Brahman, indeterminate and attributeless God according to Hinduism. Even after meditating for many days he could finally only see darkness as the object of his vision. Suddenly one day he saw a Tibetan Buddhist lama standing on the entrance of the cave. He thought that perhaps God has sent the person to assist him in his aim of God-realization. So he earnestly requested the lama to make him his disciple and help him in realizing the knowledge of God. The Tibetan Buddhist lama agreed to make Nabhan his disciple but explained that he did not know the Advaita method of spiritual practice. Since he was a Mahayana monk, he could only teach him Mahayana method of spiritual practice. Nabhan Chandra explained that knowledge of Brahman according to Advaita principles is equivalent to Nirvana of Buddhism and so he was willing to become his disciple. So under the guidance of the Lama, Nabhan Chandra learned spiritual practices and beliefs. Now it became easier for him to meditate on Nirguna Brahman God who is infinite and without attributes. But he realized that by first meditating on Saguna Brahman God with attributes, he could easily concentrate his mind on Nirguna Brahman God without, attributes. with the change in technique he finally realized his cherished dream of attaining the knowledge of Nirguna Brahman. Wanderings <inaudible> 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 Having realized the knowledge of Brahman, Nabhan Chandra decided to come down to the plains and wander, following the ideal of his Tibetan Mahayana guru of alleviating the pains and sufferings of the people of the world and inspire them to tread the path of salvation. Nabhan Chandra traveled far and wide spanning the length and breadth of India, Nepal, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Afghanistan and Myanmar, enjoying the indescribable beauty of the Nirguna Brahman who manifests in all beings of this world. Like his ideal, Lord Buddha, he alleviated the sufferings of distressed beings. He combined the teachings of Lord Buddha's path such as love, non-violence and compassion for all living beings, and the Vedantic Hindu teachings of enjoying the presence of Brahman in all beings at the same time. <laughs> Kanpur Kanpur was an important center of resistance during Indian Rebellion of 1857 also known as the First War of Indian Independence and the Sepoy Mutiny. Revolt broke out in June 1857 and Nana Sahib was declared as the Peshwa of Kanpur. The rebels defeated General Hugh Wheeler outside the city. 
but after a pitched battle Sir Colin Campbell recaptured Kanpur in December 1857. Nana Sahib and his lieutenant, Tantia Tope, escaped the city. Now the British ire was directed against the common people of Kanpur. Atrocities began to be committed against the masses. Even innocent men and women were not spared. Many people were being imprisoned in the prison houses. Wandering from place to place, Nabhan Chandra appeared in Kanpur. He was pained to see the people of Kanpur being oppressed by the British soldiers and officers. He decided to intervene. He introduced himself as a monk from Tibet as he had secured spiritual enlightenment in Tibet and asked a British officer to stop oppressing the innocent people. But his request went unheeded. Consequently, he had to use his spiritual power to temporarily weaken the soldiers under the British officer. Now the officer had to heed to his request. Nabhan Chandra also met the senior officer posted in the city and voluntarily got himself imprisoned to check how the prisoners were being treated. Finally the senior military officer realized his mistake and ordered the release of Nabhan Chandra and other prisoners who were with him. Nabhan Chandra also got an assurance that innocent people would not be punished by the British military officers and soldiers under them. At this the released prisoners and the people present at the scene hailed Nabhan Chandra as their saviour and coined the name Tibbati Baba for him. Revisit to Nepal He is among the very few saints in India who have made their soul to permanently or temporarily enter into another human body. According to Hinduism any living human being soul can enter the body of another living or dead human being. This fact is supported by Swami Vivekananda in his book Raj Yoga or Conquering the Internal Nature. This can be done when one meditates on the body which is to be entered. Another known saint said to have achieved the feat is Adi Shankara. He did it when Avaya Bharati, the wife of Mandana Mishra, challenged him to have a debate on the science of sex love." So to learn the practical aspects of love making, he entered his soul into the body of a dead king for period of one month. Consequently, Avaya Bharati was forced to accept defeat. In Hinduism it is held that birth and death is like changing one's clothes. Birth occurs when a soul enters a new body. When the soul discards the body the incident is called death. When after wandering for many years, he found that his body has grown weak, he decided to enter his soul into the body of a Tibetan Buddhist monk. The Tibetan Buddhist monk Lama had just entered into the state of Parinirvana. After getting the new body, the body of the Lama he resumed his wanderings and began making disciples. <laughs> Second view. This is the view as propounded in the biographical books Tibbati Baba Pariche and Paramhamsa Tibbati Baba Smiti Katha written by Tibbati Baba's disciples like Kunjashwar Misra and Akhandananda Brahmachari. <laughs> Early life Tibbati Baba was born in Salet, Srihatta, Bangladesh. His original name was Nabhan, Nabhan Chattopadhyaya according to Kunjashwar Misra. He was the sixth child of his family. His father and mother were great devotees of Lord Shiva. His father died when he was very young. Nabhan, Nabhan Chattopadhyaya did his early education from his village school. Right from his childhood he was spiritually inclined. At the age of 13 years, he decided to leave his home to pursue his quest for the knowledge of God. <laughs> Search for a guru Nabhan visited many places like Gaya, Ayodhya and Vrindavan in search of a guru. But he could not find anyone who could be his guru. Next he went to Amanat Shrine in Kashmir. There he met a monk who advised him to go to Tibet where his desire of finding a guru would be fulfilled. But he also said that if he went through Nepal, then his journey would be less straining. 
For entering Tibet via Nepal he Nabin would require the permission of the King of Nepal. The monk then told Nabin to first visit the Prime Minister of Nepal who was well acquainted with him the monk. The Prime Minister would then take him Nabin to the king and then he would not find it difficult to get permission to go to Tibet. <laughs> Nepal From Amarnat, Nabin went to Nepal. After visiting many temples and other places, he finally met the Prime Minister of Nepal. He told the Prime Minister about his spiritual thirst and the message sent by the monk he met at Amarnat. The Prime Minister took him to the King of Nepal. The King was amazed at the spiritual thirst of such a young teenaged boy and he promptly gave him Nabin permission to go to Tibet via Nepal. He also gave a letter to him to be given to a lama known to him, the king. Topic: <inaudible> Tibet. Nabin Tibetibaba entered into Tibet with a group Tibetan businessmen. In Tibet, he did not find it difficult to find the lama recommended by the king of Nepal. The lama agreed to make Nabin his disciple. He asked him whether he remembered anyone at his home. Nabin fondly remembered his buffalo. Now the Lama asked him to meditate on the image of buffalo in his mind. Thus began Nabin's meditation and after intense meditation for one year, he attained Nirvikalpa Samadhi of Saguna Brahman God with attributes. The Lama was amazed at the achievement of attaining Samadhi at such a young age. He then took Nabin to a famed lama named Paramananda Thakka. Paramananda was a very great lama of Tibet and had reached the acme of Advaita Vedanta, Tantra and Mahayana Buddhism. The lama requested that Paramananda make Nabin his disciple. Paramananda agreed to give shelter to Nabin, but did not immediately make Nabin his disciple. Nabin had to first prove his worth. So Nabin selflessly served his new master for a few years. Finally Paramananda was pleased with Nabin's service and made him his disciple. Under Paramananda, Nabin rigorously followed the principles of Yoga, Tantra, Advaita Vedanta and Mahayana Buddhism for six years and reached great heights of these doctrines. He finally attained Nirvikalpa Samadhi of Nirguna Brahman God without attributes and his childhood dream of gaining knowledge of indeterminate God was fulfilled. Now Nabhan's guru asked him to visit other places of Tibet to gain perfection in spiritual knowledge. So Nabhan embarked upon visiting other places of Tibet. His fame and respect as spiritually accomplished person grew in whole Tibet and began to be respected as a great person. Nabhan stayed in Tibet for 40 years, during which he learned many healing techniques from many lamas and old Tibetan medical texts. Wanderings Having stayed in Tibet for a long time, Nabhan decided to visit other parts of the world. Starting from the Chang Tang region of Tibet, he began his long journey of visiting places like China, Mongolia, Russia, Siberia region and Myanmar. He was well received everywhere and his respect as a healer and spiritually accomplished man grew manifold. He became literate in the languages of the countries he visited. Among the foreign languages known by him were, English, Mandarin, Tibetan, Russian, Mongolian, Burmese. He next entered into India and visited many places. When the Buddhist monks of Myanmar came to know about his long stay and accomplishments in Tibet, they coined the name Tibetibaba for him. On his second visit to Myanmar, with the permission of the king and queen of Myanmar, who were his great devotees, he transmigrated his soul into the body of the dead prince of Myanmar. This was done because his original body had grown weak and feeble on account of old age. Devotee of Buddha Tibetibaba was ardently devoted to Buddha. He incorporated into his life love, compassion and non-violence and towards all living beings from the teachings of Lord Buddha. 
He died at his ashram in Palatpur village in Burdwan, India, after keeping an idol of Buddha in front of him. <laughs> Ashrams Two ashrams were established, one at Dalal Pukul locality of Santragachi area of Howrah city, India and another at Palatpur village of Burdwan district, India. <laughs> Howrah ashram In November 1929, second Agrahayana of Bengali calendar 1336, an ashram was established at Santragiki in Howrah, India by Tibeti Baba. Land for the ashram was bought by a man named Bishnupada Chattopadhyaya, later known as Bhuvan Swami. The first brick for the ashram was laid by Tibeti Baba himself. Later, more land for the ashram was bought by a man from Entali area of Kolkata. This ashram was given the name Tibeti Baba Vedanta Ashram by his devotees and disciples. It is commonly referred to as Tibeti Baba, Tibati Baba Ashram by the common people of Dalal Pukur area. Tibeti Baba Lane, beside Dalal Pukur, a large pond of the area, is named after the saint. Topic: Palatpur Ashram. The Palatpur Ashram is located at Palatpur village in Burdwan, West Bengal, India. Land for ashram was donated by Bhutnath Tar. He was also assisted by Dharma Das and some of friends in his efforts to get the ashram constructed. This ashram was given the name of Pragya Mandir Temple of Consciousness. On the 19th of November 1930, corresponding date, month and year of Bengali calendar, second Ogrohayon, 1337. After midnight, he died at this ashram. Later, his samadhi tomb was built here. The ashram also has samadhi tomb of Soam Swami, his disciple. Topic. Healing powers He had remarkable healing powers. His healing powers, combined with his knowledge of innumerable herbs and animal products, alleviated the diseases and physical problems of many people. The first lessons of the art of healing were learnt from Dindale Upadhyaya of Gaya, who was an Ayurvedic practitioner. Further knowledge and techniques of healing were learnt from the Lamas and the Buddhist tantrics of Tibet. Topic. Teachings One must not consider oneself as body or mind as each person is the supreme infinite soul or God this teaching is in accordance with the Advaita philosophy. One must lead one's life based on truth. The causes of emotions like fear and shame is the false association of self or Atman soul with the body and mind. When one gets knowledge that self or Atman soul is different from body or mind, then these emotions disappear. When people get entangled in evil deeds they can again become pure and good by means of good discourse and suggestion. One cannot fully love another person without seeing oneself in the other person. Notable disciples. His admirers, disciples and devotees ranged from undivided India to Afghanistan, Russia, Tibet, China, Mongolia, Japan and Myanmar Burma. Some of his famous disciples were Dharmadas Rai, he was a great devotee and disciple of Tibeti Baba. He was a companion of Tibeti Baba in his wanderings to southern India. He was a resident of Channa village. Kunjishwa Misra, a resident of North Kolkata, he was an allopath medical practitioner doctor by profession. He had written books named Tibeti Baba Pariche this was a biography on Tibeti Baba, Chandatatve Vid O Vijian, Ramayan Bodh Bar Barmikir Atmaprakash and Gleanings from Ramayana, Ramayan Bodh, and Ajatatva Kumudi, Raslila Prabriti Prabhundabali. Akshay Mitra 
Soam Swami, whose original name was Shamakanta Bandapadhyaya, was Tipati Baba's Advaita Vedantic disciple. He had so much physical strength that he could wrestle even tigers. Soam Swami had ashram in both in Nainital and Haridwar. The writings of Soam Swami include the books Soam Gita, Soam Samhita, Common Sense and Truth this book was the only book written by him in English poetry. It was published in Calcutta, now Kolkata, in 1913. Jatindra Nath Banerjee, who was a very active revolutionary of India's freedom struggle during the first decade of the 20th century of India's freedom struggle, perhaps became the most famous disciple of Soam Swami. He was among the initial members of Anushilan Samiti which was established in 1902. He was rechristened Niralamba Swami and he established an ashram at Channa village, Burdwan, India. Niralamba Swami had hailed Tibbati Baba as one of the greatest exponent of Advaita Vedanta after Adi Shankara when he visited him at his ashram in Channa village. Niralamba Swami had written an introduction to the book named Common Sense. This book is mentioned by Bhagat Singh in his famous work, Why I Am an Atheist. Bhagat Singh was a legendary freedom fighter of India. Bhagat Singh had met Niralamba Swami at Channa Ashram at Channa village in the beginning of 1929 1927-1928 according to some. Mong Pain, he was a Burmese. Bhutnath Tar, he was the landlord of Palatpur village, near Burdwan town in the Burdwan district of West Bengal in India. He had donated land for the Palatpur Ashram. His ancestors at present are living in Burdwan town. Dharma Das Mondal, he was a resident of Palatpur village. Dwijapada, Tibbati Baba had narrated many incidents related to his life to him. Sadhana Moitra, she was a direct female disciple of Tibbati Baba. Dr. Kunjishwa Mishra was the husband of the sister in law of Sadhana Moitra. Philosophy <laughs> 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 The philosophy of Tibbati Baba has been well explained in the following books: Bharata Sadik O Sadaka, Bharata Sadik Sadaka, Tibbati Baba Parichay, and Paramhamsa Tibbati Baba Smiti Katha. Tibbati Baba aspired and practiced Mahayana doctrine and the Advaita Vedanta doctrine at the same time. The universalism of Mahayana ideal helped him to reach the infinite world of knowledge of Brahman of Advaita Vedanta. He had said that the experience of knowing Brahman can also make a person to realize the universalism of the Mahayana doctrine. It helps a person to embrace the whole world. According to him when the believers of Advaita Vedanta attained success in their endeavor of knowing Brahman then the name differences Nama Beda, visual perception differences Rupa Beda, and the differences in attributes Guna Beda, of the world slowly vanish for the yogi. In other words, homogeneous differences Beda, heterogeneous differences Beda, and internal differences Beda slowly disappear. Then it becomes safe for the believer to easily love any living being. This can easily help in transmitting Buddha's message of love, compassion, goodwill and non-violence to any living being, even to wild and ferocious animals. He stressed the fact that one gains the knowledge of Atman soul by great efforts. Atman is self-illuminating and of the nature of true knowledge. Attaining Nirvana is equivalent to knowing the Atman. By knowing the Atman all animate as well as inanimate things can be known. Without knowing the Atman the perception of differences cannot vanish fully and consequently one finds it difficult to fully show compassion and love towards all living beings. He also said that the Upanishads declare that there is nothing beyond the Atman and Paramatma God is the highest manifestation of Atman. Buddha means the enlightened one. Buddha identified oneself with everyone in this world. A Soam Swami or Paramahamsa according to Advaita Vedanta any person who reaches the pinnacle of spirituality is known as Soam Swami or Paramahamsa also does the same. Thus we find that Advaita Vedanta and Mahayana doctrine may have differences, but, they also have similarities. 
The similarities are with regard to the nature of truth and truth is universal. There is no great difference Brahman or Paramatma of Vedanta and universalism of Mahayana doctrine. Lord Buddha had told, "...as a mother, even at the risk of her life, protects her son, so let him who has recognized the truth, cultivate goodwill among all beings without measure." This kindness is without any obstacles, hatred and enmity in the mind. This type of attitude is to be found in Advaita Vedanta also. It is known as Brahman Brahma Vihara. Brahma Vihara is living and moving and having one's happiness in the attitude of Brahman. So Brahman Vihara is equivalent to Buddha's infinite friendly attitude, goodwill and compassion towards all living beings. Tibhatibhava knew the similarities and dissimilarities between Mahayana doctrine and Advaita Vedanta doctrine, but he laid stress on the similarities. He led a life based on the similarities. Another aspect of Tibhatibhava's philosophy was public service. He engaged in public service by giving good suggestions to all and by practicing his healing powers. Views That God exists is proven by the fact that the sky, in spite of being empty, is still filled with light during daytime. When a snake touches and coils itself around the body of a person absorbed in deep meditation and the person does not feel the presence of the snake then the person is said to have achieved perfection in meditation. A shakta is not one who seeks madder fermented alcoholic beverages and maithuna sex, but one who realizes the manifestation of shakti in all living beings. Come with me, I will teach you to subdue the beasts of ignorance roaming in jungles of the human mind. You are used to an audience, let it be a galaxy of angels, entertained by your thrilling mastery of yoga. See also Advaita Vedanta Mahayana Nondualism Buddhism Buddhist terms and concepts Palatpur Channa village Topic. Further reading Ghosh, Sudhanshu Ranjan, Bharata Sadiko Sadaka, Bengali edition, India, Tuli Kalam Publication, One College Row, Kolkata 700009, Bengali calendar year 1399, pp. 318-343. Chakravorty, Subod, Bharata Sadik, Sadaka. Bengali edition, India, Kamini Publication, 115 Akil Mystery Lane, Kolkata 700009 Bengali Calendar Year 1404, Volume 1, pp. 450-478 and 500-522 Brahmachari, Akhandananda, Paramhamsa Tibhati Baba Smiti Katha Bengali edition, India, Tibhati Baba Vedanta Ashram, 76 thirds, Tantapara Lane, P.O. Santragachi, Howrah 711104, West Bengal May 2003, pp. 1 Misra, Kunjashwar, Tibhati Baba Parichay Bengali edition, India, Tibhati Baba Vedanta Ashram, 76 thirds, Tantapara Lane, P.O. Santragachi, Howrah 711104, West Bengal 1934. Bengali calendar year 1341 Shankarnath Roy, Bharata Sadik Bengali edition, India, Prachi Publications, 3 and 4, Hare Street, Teta, Kolkata 700001 West Bengal ed. 1980, Vol. 9. pp. 213 to 241